three. Can you hear me? All right, all right. So let's try this once again. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I guess the first time I recorded it, did not uh, record my audio. Recorded it, did not uh, record my audio. Recorded it, did not. There we go. My bad. All right. Can you guys hear me now? Awesome. All right. So, can you hear me? Awesome. Okay. So my subject today it is the life cycle of a toy. As you guys know, I am the wife of Tom Chaos from Raging Nergasm. I'm also the content manager for Raging Nergasm, but this is my own little channel. Uh, it's called Living with a Toy Collector, and one of the things that I got a chance to do is understand and kind of figure out how the life size, how the life cycle of a toy works. Um, we, I've seen toys being traded, being traded, being traded, just being played with, I mean, thrown away, so on and so forth. All right, so let's go back a little bit and let's just start from the beginning. All right, so the first thing you want to keep in mind is how, uh, you know, how the process starts. Now, I do have another video called the life cycle of a toy or not the life cycle of a toy, um, why toys are so expensive. So there I pretty much talk about the cost and all kinds of stuff about toys. Uh, but right now I'm just going to talk about, you know, just changing hands from production to the end. All right, so for example, toy company starts with an idea. The idea pretty much goes from paper and pencil being discussed, being prototypes being made, being passed to, you know, uh, what's called the... Um, testing, uh, making sure it's safe, uh, being tested with kids, all kinds of stuff. So until finally everything gets approved, it checks through, and then it gets approved to be sent for production to China. Yes, everything gets made in China, whether you want to admit it or not, it's made in China. Okay, that's why it all looks so cheap, because it's all made in China. But anyway, so from there, China produces it, send it back to the to the U.S. and U.S. pretty much goes ahead and it sends it at sells it at wholesale prices. Now, some of you guys are going, "What's wholesale?" Well, wholesale means that if you are at a store and you're looking at a product that they sold for, they're selling you for twenty bucks. Chances are it costs the company to make that product maybe seven dollars, but the company needs to make profit from those products, so they're wholesaling it or they're selling it at a discounted price to the store for you know I don't know ten dollars and then the store is marking it up by fifty percent that's just an example they're not actual exact numbers but I'm just pretty much letting you know you know that's pretty much how it works among a bunch of other costs again watch my other video is called why toys are so expensive will make a little bit more sense all right so here you have wholesale now this wholesale will be sold to pretty much four major types of uh, sources. You'll be t sold to major retails, which is Target, Walmart, you know, Toys R Us, your standard stores. Online exclusives, so depending on the company, for example, Matt, Mattel has Matty Collectors, which they distribute the He-Man and Ghostbusters, among several other lines that are just exclusive online through a club and all kinds of good shenanigans to in order to get these exclusive toys wink wink and then you also have you know places like Disney uh, Disney does have their own toy manufacturing division and they pretty much have like Disney store exclusives or Disney theme park exclusives and obviously you can purchase them online so on and so forth and then you have your standard stores like Target online Toys R Us online and then you have other things such as eBay as well so you know, of course, you also have your standard vendors, which are also comic book shops, which might also have an online store, so on and so forth, along with a storefront. All right, so now, depending on who is the end buyer, you, you pretty much go between two paths. You either go from retail store, especially for a parent, if, you, if you're just buying a toy for your kid, you pretty much just go to the retail store, buy whatever, and give it to your kid. Then it goes to another string of actions, which I'm going to get to a little bit later. But let's go back over here and let's talk about the collector. So it either goes from the retail store. Let me draw another line here. There we go. Retail store to the collector, the online exclusive to the collector, the online store to the collector, the vendor or comic book shop to the collector. All right. Now, this type of of sale or this type of process right here this is pretty much your standard market a company creates a product a manufacturer it and then goes ahead and gives it to the consumer to be consumed this is your standard market this is basic business 101 all right however because you're actually dealing with physical goods now you're getting into something that is known and this is how me and Tom uh, get so many of our toys is something known as a secondary market all right so 
let's go ahead and just go through the easiest path first. Let's just go to the path of the child. All right. Oh, let me turn that up. Excuse me. There's some my uh, virus protector has turned on. Anyway, so the child, obviously, most like most of us, we're gonna get a toy. We're gonna play with it. Now, depending on the the kid, the kid might want to collect it. Hence, grows up and becomes the collector. But that's yet another life cycle that I'm not gonna get into right now. All right. It's either gonna play with it. And it's going to give it away. Either it's going to go to another child, which normally like a cousin or a neighbor or a church. All right. Or it'll be given away, which will be sold out in the garage sale or it'll be sold, you know, be pretty much just end up in the flea market. All right. So let's go ahead and finish this life cycle real quick. Now, most toys that are given away from child to child to child, eventually the child, the, the toy will deteriorate to the point that it's just not safe to play with. So it will go to the trash. And even then, there's a chance it'll end up in the flea market. That's a whole different ballpark. But at that point, normally ends up at the dump. And the dump is pretty much the final destination. Am I saying that that's always the final destination? No. But if you're out there digging for toys to sell to somebody else, you're a sick, sick, sick person. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so so that's pretty much the basic cycle here from the retail store to a child. Now let's go to the collector. The collector is a little more complicated. So obviously the collector get its toys other from one of these sources. All right. Now from here the collector obviously grabs their their prize and the other put in the collection. Now. From here, it can go different ways. They actually can stay in their collection for as long as the person is around, or it could go to different uh, pathways, okay? Now, normally, now these are the reasons we have encountered why collectors, collections are moving or collectible items are moving. This is not always the case, but these seem to be the most, um, the, the, most of the ones that we have encountered throughout the years, uh, the, we've been together, we've been together for three years at this point, and uh, I've been just thrown in foot first into this, and I've just been learning as I've been going along. Now, the main reason why collectors sell their toys is, uh, obviously, the collector will die. Uh, it does happen. Either they die young or they die from unfortunate events like a car accident. Or they simply got too old and it got passed down to the wife or the children. And if children are not interested in keeping this and they just want it to go to a good home or they just want to get rid of it. So we've encountered that several times. The wife or girlfriend. Wives pissed off that you're collecting too much. Girlfriends too pissed off you're collecting too much and giving you the ultimatum. I know, I know. So we guys are saying if the girl is just a piece of work, just get rid of it. But hey, the girlfriend you could do that. The wife you're legally bounded to them, which normally ends up on this, known as divorce. So you have the W word, the G word, the, the D word, or you have the B word. <laughs> it's a joke between me and me and Tom. All right, so. So the divorce, obviously, you know, we've seen it so where the collector itself got to get assets um, to pay the wife. So what we've seen is the collectors just selling the, co the collection at third cheap price just so their ex-wife doesn't get a single dime of it. And we've seen this a couple times already, and it's kind of crazy. And it's sad because, you know, the collector really enjoys their toys, but they really hate their ex-wife, which is pretty funny. Um, here's another one that's very real, loss of employment. Uh, we all been through it. Uh, so yeah, so this is obviously you gotta eat, you gotta put, you know, food on your plate because you can't just live off from air or the energy of the universe. Wink. All right, so on and so forth. Family emergency. Somebody gets very ill. You don't have money for medicine, or even for yourself or treatment. So we've seen that. It's very sad. We try to do our best to. If our friend approaches with this, we try to be very fair and not, you know, like some people try to jib them out and you know they need 400 and they don't try to give them 100. No, we're not like that. Uh, but we have seen it a couple times where people approach us due to emergencies. New family arrival. This is one that's been very common, especially recently. We've had four of our, you know, couple friends have immediately within the past month said that they're they're pregnant. And uh, within like a week or so, we're seeing their entire collection going up on eBay or pretty much like it's, they're trying to sell it on Facebook or Craigslist or whatever. Um, yeah, new arrival, baby. Baby would do that. The, the, the girlfriend or wife put up with it long enough and it go, baby's coming. We need money. Sell that shit. It's pretty much what it comes down to. Excuse my language. All right. Or they're simply tired of it and want to trade up or get something better. That's pretty much how it goes. All right. So at this point, the collector has a couple options. They can either sell it or trade it to another collector, 
which goes back to the collector, which goes to the collection, or they can sell it or trade it to another collector, which goes to their online store, which they could have an eBay store, or they pretty much eventually would, the collector maybe owns a comic book shop, so it goes back into the cycle itself. All right, so this right here actually goes both ways. There we go, so on and so forth. All right, or the collector can pretty much go ahead and sell it directly to the comic book store, so on and so forth, and it goes from there. All right, so not so bad. Now, here's the final destination where the collector gets very desperate, and they will sell it to the flea market. Now, if you if you think that $20 toy, you're going to get $20 for it, no. Keep in mind that because if you ever seen, what is it called, uh, Pawn Stars, I love, this is one thing I always love about Pawn Stars, where people get, like, an appraisal, and they immediately want the full price of the appraisal. No. The vendor has to make money off from that object they're purchasing from you. So if what it, if you think it's worth twenty dollars, at least maybe expect maybe fifty. Fifty percent of that value. So if it's worth twenty, the vendor of the comic book shop might be kind and it might it might just give you ten dollars. That's being kind. If you go to the flea market, be lucky to get a buck. Okay, <laughs> we've seen that before. Oh, you got a whole truck full of collectors, collectibles, yeah, I'll give you a hundred bucks. We see that all the time. It's crazy. All right. So, once again, ends up at the flea market, the final destination. Do, 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 do. Where, once again, it gets picked up by another collector, which goes to the collection, which pretty much eventually gets sold for whatever other reason, which eventually goes back and it'll end up in the flea market. I've seen this over and over and over. And even the flea market, i got to tell you, I noticed there's a cycle in there too. Things that will be on one vendor will get traded for another vendor, will get traded for another vendor, so on and so forth, which is, is hilarious. There's also a lot of drama in the flea market, which is pretty fun. All right, so eventually, you know, and this is something that even I myself, I, I knew about this, but it wasn't until I charted it out. Unless it's a toy that's pretty much very 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 play with which is completely broken it rarely ends up in the trash if you can think about it someone out there's collecting it all right so unless it's super broken it's going to end up in the trash and even that i'm sure will end up in somebody's custom figure i got to tell you that right now so even there's still one more step before it reaches the dump all right this better be broken okay <laughs> All right, so, but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my little review on um, the life cycle of a toy. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Anna Chaos from Living with a Toy Collector, also part of Raging Orgasm, and I'll talk to you guys next time.